stretching is very important to activate your body. Like I said before, movement's medicine, and whether you're just sitting at a desk for a really long time, you're getting your hip flexors very tight. So you could be going for a race or you could be getting up from the desk. It's important to stretch out and mobilize your body. All right, <clears throat> what we're doing here is called the cat-cow, <clears throat> and notice there's a lot of movement going on. Now, I classify these into a static stretch because he's got a hold here. So I, ideally, uh, the ter terminology is active, isolated stretching. It's kind of a marriage between static and dynamic. He's working his cervical spine all the way down to here. He's working his lumb the thoracic spine from here all the way down, and then he's got his lumbar spine in. Notice when he comes in and arches his spine like that, he's exhaling. And notice when he goes back, he's inhaling. Notice when he goes forward, he's putting the head down. That is opening the spine up. You have to keep in mind when you're running this race, what you do with your neck is going to affect your whole spine. So keep in mind, you have to bring everything in. It's what's called the kinetic chain. So what's next? He's going into a pigeon stretch. And notice what he's emphasizing are a couple of things. He's working on the ankle on the other side. He's working the hip flexor on this side. And on the side I'm on, he's working the big gluteal muscle. Notice his movement of the upper torso. He's going to come back and he's going to arch back up. He's, he's opening up the abdominal muscles, the big rectus muscles, and then he is stretching the hip capsule. You can't forget everything is connected. I can tell you in my experience with Major League Baseball, so goes the hip and you have a hip strain, you might very well start to see an abdominal strain. They all pull together. And typically what you're finding in your runners before this race is many of their problems didn't occur during the race. They occurred in the training, but it's showing up in the race. So we've got to free the hip flexor. Notice the angle of the knee. He's got the knee bent so he can stretch the gluteal muscle, that's the big hip butt muscle, on the opposite side. Now what he's going to do is the lizard stretch. And again, notice what he's working on the ankle. Again, that's very important because 70% of your runners are going to impact first on the heel and rock forward. So you're going to hit here, roll forward, and go. So what Spencer is doing, he's a combination of the ankle on the one side and he's working the hip flexors and the extensors, that's the back of the hamstring and the buttocks, on the other side. He's doing it in a manner in which the human body functions. So this is very functional stretching to what you're about ready to go do with your running. And notice in this particular case, he's holding it, holding it in this case for about five to 10 seconds. If you were gonna just do static stretching, at least 30 seconds would be fine. But this is a form of stretching that I like to refer to as active isolated stretching meaning he's isolating and he's actively doing it. Now the hamstring, which is critical for deceleration. The toe is up. Notice he's stretching the calf. Notice he's working the hamstring. Sitting back on my butt. And he's stretching the back of his body, the butt. And he, you can actually, if you have to, put your hand on your knee if you need to support your back, which he will do. And he'll pull back you pull back to what you're comfortable with. Remember, when he pulls here, he's feeling it all here. And he's working into what's called the tibialis, or the anterior, on the front of the tibia bone right here. And again, some people will not be able to come out here and do that. So just your ability to rock is very important on your own. You don't have to do what he's doing. If you can ju just pull it back on your own. Notice he's doing that. We, he's not getting help and he's pulling back. Some people will not be able to reach out. Why? Because their low back is tight. Why? Because their hamstrings are tight. And the solution is your hips. Here we come into one that I really like. It brings back my work with the St. Louis Blues hockey team. We call this the goalie stretch. You will see goalies doing this before the games when they're stretching out their groin. This is one of the most important groin stretches you can do because when you're separating the groin, that's the, that's the inner, side, inner thighs, what you're getting actually, you're controlling how far you're going. You've got great control. Notice the movement. He comes to a position, 
and comes back. That's this active, isolated stretching. He's going to go to the other side. Notice his ankle. Notice the, notice the foot over here. You notice very stable. You notice he's not rolling because if he rolls, he misses the stretch. Now, what he's going to do now, he's going to then do both. He's going to put the legs together and then notice that. Now, he can change the intensity by bending the elbow. Notice that he's in total control because this groin area is a very sensitive area and you have to have uh, excellent control and you own the control when you use your elbow. If I'm stretching and I'm bending, I'm going to get a deeper stretch. And if I've got my arm straight, I'm going to get less of a stretch. Notice that rocking back. That is that dynamic action. That's that active, isolated stretch. So you're putting a little bit of dynamic movement into a static hold. And speaking of dynamic movement, notice he's moving his leg, but he's actually doing what's called hip flexion and extension. He's actually going through the mechanics of the hip in, in a, what's called a, um, a sagittal plane. And what's going on is you don't have to kick up like that. All you have to do is just get a swinging motion. Now, what might be good is if you bend your knee a little bit, because when you're running, you have a little bit of a bent knee. Try it with a little knee. Little, okay. Now, notice the light bend in the knee. That's because when you land, you're, you, hopefully you never land straight legged. You want to you wanna land, and remember this, the arms are the accelerator, the lean is the gas pedal. You know, there might be something I might want to show you. Hey, watch this. You might, yeah. If you want to learn how to get the right running mechanics of your, of your upper body, because the arms are the accelerator, the lean is the gas pedal. I've, I, I've got a, I've got a, well, I don't, that's next. I've got a, I've got a mirror in front of me. I'm going to cut my hands and notice I'm going to run. Now notice what happens if I open my hand. I hit the ground. But notice right like this, and I can speed up the running. I'm contracting my abdominal muscles. I've got my legs bent to the same level that I'll impact the ground. And I can speed up and sprint. I can slow down. And I can tell you, if you can master this and put in a lot of repetitions of this moment, m motion, you will free the tightness in your body, but you will actually make your running easier when you get up. So when I get up, my motion, Spencer brought it out, I take my nose, put it in my pocket. In other words, we're not running out like that. Notice, take my nose, put it in my pocket. So I'm gonna run like this. And, that, and I'm also gonna be running, not out here. My mechanics of the human body is to pull me in. So I'm gonna take my nose, put it in my pocket, and go like that, okay? And that is how you bring your hands in to this motion here. And it's going to make a huge difference. You will tire much less than you would if you're trying to fight and hands are going everywhere. What's the worst thing I see is people running like this because it's taking your body this way when you're trying to go this way. All right, last one, Hips, circles. This is the dynamic motion of the hip capsule. Notice he's getting internal and he's getting external. And it is going to create a balance to the inside and the back of the hip. That motion is out. Notice the foot is straight ahead. And notice and some, the some and the toes are gripping. Notice he can put a slight bend in the knee. For those people that have a balance problem, shorten your center of gravity. In other words, up here I can fall. If I, I, I fall back because my knee is straight, the minute I bend my knee, the, the minute my knee is bent, I've got balance. I can move. I can do everything. The minute I stand up, I'll fall, I'll fall over. See? So it's common sense. That's the hip capsule stretch. You can do it by holding someone's shoulder, grabbing the tree, grabbing the fence. Or work on your stability. Or with nothing at all, as Spencer says, work on your stability. You know, one of the things that you really want to focus on, especially if you're running, is you want to make sure that you work on your balance and stability, and ideally your foot strength, the intrinsic foot muscles, the muscles at the bottom of your foot, because when you're running, you are collapsing and hitting your foot and impacting the ground, and you don't want to have those weak muscles then lead to your arch collapsing and then having you fall. So it's really important to strengthen those foot muscles.
you know, sometimes all I have to do is say, he said it all. What more can I say? Now, what about nutrition? What well, you, you had more points to add to me. Go ahead. Yeah. Teach me. <laughs> teach me up. Coach me up. Okay, so like how you say you want to train to fight and fight like you train. Wow. It's 100% true. That is 100% true. But there's another one. Train to recover and recover to train. Because if you're not recovering and you're running each and every day, well, your body's degrading. And you need to give your body the right nutrition, the right rest and mobility to make sure that you're recovered to do the next action. Because once you get to overreaching, you can be out for 72 hours. But when you get to overtraining, that could take you out six weeks to six months. The number one thing that I'm seeing in thousands of athletes over the years I've been doing it is overtraining. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you with the special operators that we both help uh, out of Fort, um, out of Fort uh, Bragg, which is now Fort, Fort Liberty, Liberty. Uh, I can tell you overreach, overtraining uh, will get you killed. And so if you can take a lesson from those men that go in and protect our country from threats, the biggest thing I can tell you is, as he said, train to recover and recover, recover to train. train. And, and, and one of those ways to even catch yourself if you're at that level, I mean, most runners nowadays, they have an Apple Watch or something that's gonna give them their heart rate. And if you notice that your heart rate's not getting up as high as it typically would, you're in that range. You're either overreaching or overtraining. So make sure that you go back and recover and get some sleep. Get some magnesium in you before you go to bed to help you get that restful, deep sleep. And you'll see when you come back two to three days later, your heart rate will go back up. And it will be very stable. When he talks about magnesium, magnesium is a mineral that affects many processes in the body, including stabilization of the blood sugar. Mm -hmm. Magnesium for, uh, affects the diastolic blood pressure. In fact, many people are prescribed magnesium for their blood pressure. Also, the type of magnesium, magnesium glycinate, glycinate uh, attacked, attached to a chelated to a amino acid called glycine, is probably the most uh, effective one. Uh, you do have magnesium, magnesium citrate, but too much magnesium citrate can give you a It'll diet. It'll send you to the bathroom. Send you to the bathroom. But uh, that is a very important mineral uh, uh, to be able to, mm -hmm. to take, especially for runners. And doing it before the bed will actually give you a more peaceful rest at night. And if you go to a vitamin store or Whole Foods or anything like that and you're looking for magnesium, look on the back of the label. Make sure you're getting the right form. There's a bunch of different forms of magnesium. So it would either come up as magnesium glycinate or magnesium biglycinate. 